OK, buses. What are they? And why would we want to send the output of a channel strip for a, a track to a bus instead of the final stereo output, which is the default? OK, well, I've changed things around a bit. Um, I've got this little EVP88 as before on this instrument track, and I've just put this little row of blips, OK? So when I hit play, the EVP88 gets triggered, the signal from the EVP88 travels down the channel strip and out, heading to the destination, which is the stereo out, and as we've already learnt, therefore the stereo out channel strip appears here in the inspector column because it's the destination channel strip for this channel strip, which is the channel strip for this track. Okay, now remember the channel strips in the inspector column are copies of the ones in the mixer, okay, so watch what happens now. What I'm going to do now is this is the channel strip for this track, and that's the copy over here, right? And this channel strip is assigned to stereo out, so the destination channel strip that appears next door is a copy of the stereo out in the mixer, okay? All right. So I'm going to go to this channel strip for this track, and I'm going to go to the output slot there, and I'm going to left click, and I'm going to change the output destination to a bus. Now there are 64 buses available and none of them have been used yet. So what I do is I go up the list and I'm going to choose bus 1. While holding down the left mouse I go up the list and when it's over bus 1 I let go of the left mouse. And I want you to watch the mixer down below, right? Ready? Okay. See that? Logic has created this extra channel strip called auxiliary 1. Okay? Now what I've done is, this is the channel strip for the track, and this is the copy of it on the left, right? And I've changed its output destination now to bus 1, and as you can see, the legend now says bus 1 auxiliary 1 in brackets. Because no buses were in use before I assigned this channel strip to a bus, and because this was the first bus assigned that anything was assigned to, Logic created its first auxiliary channel strip, auxiliary 1, to handle that bus signal. OK, um, I'll explain more about that in a sec. OK, so the destination of this channel strip, of which this is the copy on the inspector column here, is now sending its destination to bus 1, and therefore the destination channel strip in the inspector column here is no longer the output 1, 2 stereo out channel strip, it's now the auxiliary 1 channel strip. Because if you look at auxiliary 1 and look at its input output section, it's receiving its signals from bus 1. And its output is going to the final stereo out. Okay, so what's happened is as soon as we assigned this channel strip to a bus, bus 1, Logic created an extra or auxiliary channel and set its input to be the same as the bus that we just assigned the channel strip here to send into. Okay, now what is a bus? Okay, well, a bus is like an invisible road hidden inside Logic. You can't see them, right? And signals can be sent into any of the 64 buses and they're like these invisible roads that travel along inside logic carrying electrical audio signals. So the signal now flows out of this channel strip for the instrument track into bus 1. It, it travels then along that hidden road called bus 1, right, the signal, travels along that hidden road called bus 1 until it arrives at auxiliary one channel strip which has its input set to receive on bus one so any signal traveling along bus one will arrive at this auxiliary one channel strip it will then travel down this auxiliary one channel strip and leave heading off to its destination set in the output slot for this ch channel strip which is stereo out so the signal arriving at this auxiliary channel strip from bus one travels down this auxiliary channel strip and heads out to the stereo output there and then out to my speakers. Okay, so now what's happening is the audio signal from the electric piano is travelling down here across along the hidden bus one 
arriving at this auxiliary one channel strip, traveling down this channel strip and then heading out of this channel strip to the final stereo out channel strip from where it heads off to my speakers. So in effect we've put this channel strip in between the original and the final stereo out. And now if I hit play you'll see the signal from the piano on this channel strips meter and it travels along the bus and it appears on the auxiliary one channel strip meter as it flows down this channel strip and then it heads out to the final stereo out channel strip where you'll see the signal on the meter again okay watch one along the bus into this channel strip two out of this channel strip into this channel strip three and then out to my speakers okay so in effect what we've done is we've placed this auxiliary channel between the original channel for the track and the final stereo out channel strip. But why would we do that? What's the point of sending the signal through this extra stereo channel strip and then to the final stereo out instead of how it was before just going straight from its channel strip for the instrument straight across to the final stereo out channel strip. Why have we added this auxiliary channel strip in between the original for the instrument and the output channel strip. There's a good reason for that and I'll show you what that is now.